Oh, hello. My name's Rob, and this is Cattle Rabbit Scale Model Studios. And in this video, I'm going to show you a really easy way to make scatter terrain pieces and use up some of those leftover bits from those alternative build options. This is a super easy method and pretty quick to do once you get rolling. Uh, I'm going to show you a few examples in this video, and before I forget, all the materials and any useful information will be listed in the description box below, along with any links and ways you can help support the channel. And if you do enjoy this video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up, letting me know in the comments below, or chucking us a cheeky subscribe. Now that's out of the way, let's get started. Now to begin with, we are going to need a few things. Don't worry, it might look like a lot, but these are these stirrers. I still mine from my local Greg's but you can get these <laughs> on big packs uh, anywhere pretty relatively cheap. If I do find any I'll put them in the links below. Super glue. I like to use this cheap stuff for builds. Um, it cost me one pound. It's not a massive loss if the nozzle clogs or if I forget to put the lid on which would you believe happens quite a lot at my studio desk. Next up bits. I find bits like vehicle chassis or leftover night parts work really well in this instance or you could just use any like regular barrels, boxes, anything like that but we do want a fairly sizable part if you will. So next up cable ties, um, they come in a lot of colours if not Tamiya extra thin tape works really well. Now, cheesecloth this is optional uh, i have no idea what this is called outside the uk so if you do know please do let me know in the comments so i can pin it to help others out but it's relatively cheap this was about two pound and i got mine from the local discount store it's up cheap acrylic paint and pva once again th these are kind of optional and you'll see why a little bit later a sharp knife and some clippers also, uh, you could use a little bit of sandpaper. I like to use a small file. And lastly, some paints. Here I've got Agrax Urshade. Uh, I'll use a red and a blue as well. Um, you'll see why once again later on in the video. So to start with, uh, we've got our bit, but we need to make something to put our spare pieces on. For this, I like to make miniature pallets. Um, you can make these long, wide, any size you want, but for the purpose of this, I am going to make something around about four centimeters by four centimeters. I find that works fine. Now, using a pair of clippers, I cut 11 pieces of coffee stirrer into four centimeter lengths. And I cut nine little squares, uh, just eyeballing it roughly, um, but about a coffee stirrer wide and a coffee stirrer in length. These don't have to be accurate. In actual fact, none of this has to be accurate. They do have a little bit of fun with it. Now, using the squares on my cutting mat as a bit of a guide, I glue four four centimeter pieces together. Uh, making a square. Then I glue three four centimeter sections, um, roughly spacing them apart, and this will actually make our top section. I then flip it over and glue a piece of four centimeter stirrer roughly in the middle. I then attach my nine small pieces to act as legs in rows of three. Once again, just roughly spacing them by eye.
that I glue my last three four centimeter lengths in a row. And hey presto, we've got a little miniature palette. Now, scale-wise, it's a bit big, especially placed next to a human-sized scale miniature, or if you are a human next to a real-life palette. Um, however, this is the 41st millennium, and have you seen the size of old Govanic servo haulers? They're not small. Now, once again, you can make these as long or as short as you want. Here you can see I've made some slightly longer ones. Uh, you might need to just adjust how many sections you make uh, do just make sure you have the bit you want to place on it nearby just so you can get your sizing right. But now it's time to paint them up. And here you can see I'm going to use some blue and some Agrax Urshade just to add a little bit of variation. But you can paint these whatever colour you want. I just find that these are, you often see blue palettes out in the wild, especially here in the UK, uh, along with red ones sometimes. So it's a, a little way of tricking the eye, making something seem familiar, yet yeah, it's quite clearly not. Once it was all painted, I then shaved off uh, some of the edges with a hobby knife, and then I gave them a gentle sand with my file. Once again, if you're using a bit of 80 grit paper or something along them lines, do just short, sharp strokes, hey, and just make sure you're, you're adding a, a little bit of scuffing is what we're, we're going for here. And if you haven't, it will just be a case of painting up the bits you want to place on the palette. Uh, you can either super glue them or leave them loose entirely. It is completely up to you. Now, as I said earlier, there's a few ways we can push these a little further. The first being adding some straps. For this, uh, you could cut some extra thin tape into lengths and just uh, glue it at the bottom. But here I'm going to use a cable tie. Uh, I've got some black ones. You can paint these afterwards. Um, I'm going to just leave mine as they are for the minute. And what I do is I just thread it underneath the palette and I, I do it up really gently. Um, if you over tighten these, it can pull the palette apart or crush the bit that you're trying to hold down. We're only trying to sell the effect that it's, it's strapped to a palette here. It doesn't need to be um, super duper tight unless you know that's what you're going for and a broken palette is uh what your what the end goal is as you can see now our piece is strapped down um and it looks great it's ready to be fought over things like this once again they make fantastic little bits of scenery little objectives um something to fight over in your battlefield i just i love stuff like this And then to push them even further, we can actually use our cheese cloth as netting. Now this step is going to be messy, so pop down something to protect your work surface before you do this. So as you can see here, I've got my piece. Um, it's fairly completed, I'll tell you why in a minute. It's strapped down, uh, but you will need to be at this stage before you start to tackle this step. Now, using uh, the cheese cloth, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut a piece out, just big enough to kind of cover what I need to. Uh, I would always say, leave yourself a little bit more than what you think, just in case. But as you can see here, this has a fantastic kind of texture to it and really sells that kind of draped over army effect. What I do is I fold it over a couple of times and I just roughly measure, making sure that it's, uh, it covers the section of a terrain that I actually want. Here we have my little piece cut out. It's not straight, don't worry about it. Um, we can fix that, especially at the end once it's dry. But what I wanna do is I want to dress mine over my piece, hiding the part that I haven't painted, but I wanna make it look like it's been pulled back and maybe someone's had a bit of a nose. Now, what we need here is something that you don't mind getting messy. Here you can see I've got a little shallow tub of water. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an absolute load of PVA in. and I'm gonna mix the PVA and the water together. If you're not sure how much PVA to use, uh, I would always say use more than what you think, as it's not gonna do any harm. All it does is it makes the cheesecloth dry rock hard 
at the end. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some cheap craft paint to the mixture. Now, I got this for about a pound from my local discount store. I think it's just child's craft paint. Um, it took ages to mix this stuff up and I actually ended up putting in uh, some brown ochre and I think I added some black as well just to get to a consistency I was just fairly happy with. Um, so the green effect didn't really work for me so I did just change it up. But once again, I mean you can use the Citadel stuff but it can work out quite costly if you're adding that type of paint to um, water and PVA mixes. So here you can see what I've got is I've got my piece ready and all I'm gonna do just to protect the bit that I have already painted, I'm gonna fold over a little tiny bit of paper just to cover as I don't want any kind of paint or splashes going on that. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soak my cloth. I'm gonna really, really, really work that mixture into this. Here you can see some of the bits haven't mixed quite well. Don't worry, I'm just pushing it right to the bottom of the container and I'm just moving it all around. So all I'm doing here is I'm wringing out my cloth, just making sure it's spread out. Uh, I don't really mind the, the, the dark splodges where the paint hasn't mixed properly. Uh, do just make sure it's kind of like in that sheet kind of position. And then I'm just gonna lay it over my piece. So now my hands are nice and dry. Uh, I probably should have mentioned to maybe have a little towel nearby to uh, just clean yourself up. All I'm going to do is using the end of a brush, I'm just going to fold some of the cloth back. Just generally poke it into the uh, crevices of the scenery and things like that. I'm going to tuck it around it just to kind of add some, uh, some weight to the fabric and make it look like it's quite a heavy netting. So then what you can do, if you want to add a bit more character, you can just add, while it's still wet, some little flicks into the cloth to make it look like it's had some rips and tears over time. I'm then going to put this by the radiator and I'm going to leave it to dry overnight. And here is our completed pieces. I've given mine uh, a little bit of a cheeky dry brush uh, for a bit of a dustier look. And once again, you can add some tape straps uh, over this if you want to, but do it once it's fully dried. And there's our pieces together. Super quick and easy, and a great way of turning those leftover bits into something useful for your tabletop. Just have a lot of fun with it. So thanks again for watching. Once again, if you did enjoy this, do consider giving us a like and subscribe, but that's all for me in this one. Uh, I will see you all next time. God bless and take care.